Rotten fruit versus coffee grounds versus cardboard. Which should I use to bait worms? If you've ever leaned over a worm bin and wondered what really makes those wriggling compost champions excited, you're not alone. Many gardeners discover that feeding worms is both an art and a science. It isn't just about tossing scraps into the bin, it's about creating the right conditions for worms to multiply, break down waste, and transform it into that rich, dark vermicompost gardeners call black gold. The debate often comes down to this, rotten fruit, coffee grounds, or cardboard. Which one is the true worm magnet? Today, on Soil and Crop Central, we're taking a deep dive into each bait, how worms respond, and what it means for building the healthiest vermicompost system possible. Rotten fruit sweet fast and risky. Rotten fruit has long been the go-to choice for worm keepers. Few things draw worms faster than a pile of mushy bananas, soft apples, or the rinds of a melon. The sugars, water content, and rapid decomposition make fruit irresistible. If you want to see an instant surge of worm activity in one part of your bin, fruit is the quickest lure. So here's the catch. Fruit brings friends you may not want. Fruit flies, gnats, and sometimes even ants can overrun a bin if scraps sit on the surface for too long. The trick is to bury fruit pieces beneath a few inches of bedding so the scent doesn't become a beacon for pests. Melon rinds are especially effective because they release moisture and aroma quickly, pulling worms in droves. Bananas, too, break down fast and deliver a sweet feast. The bottom line is clear rotten fruit is the instant bait. It delivers rapid results but, you know, it really does require careful handling. Used sparingly and strategically, it can help you harvest worms from one section of the bin or even jumpstart activity when things seem a bit slow. Coffee grounds occupy a unique space in worm diets. Unlike fruit, they don't create an immediate rush of excitement. Instead, they act like a slow-release energy source that worms steadily process over days and weeks. The real value of coffee grounds lies in balance. They're nitrogen-rich but also provide a gritty texture that helps worms digest softer foods. If your bin has ever smelled too acidic or slimy, mixing in coffee grounds can stabilize conditions. Worms gradually break them down into fine, nutrient-dense castings that enrich your compost. Another advantage is that coffee grounds don't attract pests the way fruit does. You can sprinkle them lightly across the bin without worrying about swarms of fruit flies. However, moderation is key. Too many grounds in one spot can compact into a dense, airless layer that resists decomposition. A better approach is to mix small amounts with bedding material or distribute them evenly. The verdict? Coffee grounds are the steady bait. They won't create instant drama but they'll keep worms thriving long term while minimizing problems with pests or odors. Ah, cardboard, the underestimated hero of the garden. While most gardeners think of it as just bedding, it turns out worms see it as food too. When shredded and moistened, cardboard becomes soft, fibrous, and surprisingly attractive to worms. Now, it might not have the sweetness of fruit or the aroma of coffee, but it provides a slow, steady fuel that worms consistently return to. You know, cardboard's greatest strength lies in its stability. Unlike fruit, it doesn't rot rapidly, and unlike coffee, it doesn't risk clumping. Instead, it quietly breaks down into a carbon-rich base that balances nitrogen-heavy scraps. So if your bin ever smells sour or feels too wet, adding shredded cardboard almost always restores equilibrium. An experiment comparing fruit coffee grounds and cardboard revealed something fascinating. The fruit pile swarmed with worms almost instantly, while the coffee pile drew steady attention. The cardboard pile, however, became the most crowded after a week. Worms had burrowed through the softened fibers, leaving behind rich, earthy crumbs. It wasn't the fastest bait, but it turned out to be the most dependable. In short, cardboard is the long game bait. It won't pull worms overnight, but it creates the safest, most sustainable environment for them to thrive in the long term. Head to head comparison. So, which bait wins the crown? Each has its strengths, and the winner depends on what you're trying to achieve. 
Rotten fruit is unbeatable for speed. If your goal is to lure worms into one section for harvesting or to jumpstart activity quickly, nothing beats the sugars and moisture of decaying fruit. The risk of pests is real, but with proper burial, fruit remains an effective lure. So, coffee grounds win for balance. They offer steady nutrition, digestive grit, and castings that are nutrient-rich and, uh, fine-textured. They won't create a feeding frenzy, but they build long-term stability and help avoid pest problems. Cardboard wins for sustainability. It doubles as bedding and bait, creating a low-maintenance environment where worms can really thrive without the risk of pests or overfeeding. Though it lacks the excitement factor, cardboard quietly underpins a healthy, balanced worm bin. If one bait must be crowned overall champion, cardboard edges out the others. Worms need more than bursts of sugar or caffeine, they thrive on stability, carbon balance, and a pest-free environment. Cardboard delivers all of that. Yet the real secret isn't choosing one bait over the others, it's learning how to combine them strategically. Experienced worm keepers often find that balance, not favoritism, creates the best vermicompost. So, here's how a mixed strategy works. Rotten fruit should be treated like dessert. Just add it once or twice a week in small portions, and always make sure to bury it under bedding. Melons and bananas are reliable favorites because they break down quickly without leaving much residue. Coffee grounds act like a steady meal, two to three small additions per week, spread evenly and lightly mixed into bedding, give worms a consistent food source without compacting the bin. Cardboard forms the foundation. Keep shredded cardboard moist and layered throughout the bin. It doubles as bedding, prevents odors, absorbs excess moisture, and serves as a fallback food when other scraps are gone. This combination creates a thriving worm environment, the fruit provides excitement, the coffee offers balance, and the cardboard ensures stability. The result is vermicompost that is dark, crumbly, and loaded with life-giving nutrients for your garden. Listening to your worms. Every worm bin is unique, and worms themselves are the best indicators of success. If you notice worms clustering around a certain food, that's your signal to keep using it. If scraps sit untouched for weeks, it's time to adjust. Worms are simple creatures, but their behavior offers clear feedback about what's working. So, it's also important to watch for warning signs. Bad odors, for example, usually mean there's too much nitrogen or maybe excess moisture, but hey, that's easily corrected by just adding some cardboard. Pest infestations often point to fruit scraps left on the surface, so, you know, burying them a bit deeper really helps. And dense clumps of coffee grounds can totally slow decomposition, so just break them up and mix them through the bedding. In other words, vermicomposting isn't really about choosing a single perfect bait. It's about, well, observing, adjusting, and striking a balance that keeps your worm colony healthy and active. So, here are some final thoughts on the real winner. The contest between rotten fruit, coffee grounds, and cardboard doesn't really end with one absolute winner. Each of these materials brings its own unique benefits. And honestly, when you use them together, they complement one another to create a thriving vermicompost system. Rotten fruit, well, it delivers excitement and speed while coffee grounds provide balance and steady nutrition. And then, cardboard ensures stability and sustainability. If there's one material that stands out for its reliability and long-term benefits, cardboard definitely claims the crown. But, you know, the real magic happens when you combine all three, creating an environment where worms can flourish season after season. So, gardeners, don't pick sides. Go ahead and experiment, observe your worms, and fine-tune the balance as you go. The result will be nutrient-rich vermicompost that transforms your soil and powers your plants naturally. And if you found this guide helpful, remember to subscribe to Soil and Crops Central and share this video with fellow gardeners. Together, we can keep building healthier soil, one worm bin at a time.